This is a continuation of Introduction to Rheological Concepts for Polymer Rheology and Processing. In the previous video, uh, we looked at how our definitions of solids and fluids change when we put them into a kind of a rheological framework. Uh, and there are several parameters that we're going to talk about in this portion to kind of uh, evaluate uh, whether it has something has solid-like behavior or liquid-like behavior. And the first one of those parameters is the Debra number. The Debra number was developed uh, by Marcus Reiner. Uh, he termed this after the biblical figure, figure Debra, the mountains flowed before the Lord. In other words, everything flows if you wait long enough, including the mountains. And Debra number is D sub E, and D sub E equals tau over T. T is the characteristic time of the deformation process, so the length of our experiment, and tau is the characteristic time of the material. So, the characteristic time of the material, uh, when you're looking at a hooky and elastic solid, tau is infinite. When you're looking for a Newtonian viscous liquid, tau is zero. Some examples. Tau for water is approximately 10 to the negative 12 seconds. For lubricating oil, tau is 10 to the negative 6 seconds. And for polymer melts, tau can be a few seconds. This is a dimensionless number. Tau is in seconds and so is time. Uh, high Debra numbers correspond to solid-like behavior, whereas low Debra numbers correspond to liquid-like behavior. So in general, a Debra number that is much greater than one is a solid-like material. A Debra number that's about one is usually considered viscoelastic, and a Debra number that's much less than one is considered liquid. Here is a real-life, kind of fun, demonstration of Debra number principles. Silly putty is a very viscous silicone material, and it will flow like a liquid, given sufficient time, um, but a ball of it will bounce like a solid. Uh, if you extend it slowly, it shows ductile fracture, like it shows here when it's stretching. Uh, but if you extend it quickly, it shows brittle fracture, like a tear. So depending on the time scale of the material, uh, it can either behave as a solid or a liquid. The Piquet number is a different dimensionless number, like the Debra number, um, but the Debra number is purely based on the observation of bulk material behavior. The Piquet number is determined by diffusivity of microstructural elements rather than the bulk. So it reflects the time scale for diffusive motion relative to the time scale for that of flow. Here we have the diffusion, the diffusion coefficient. Uh, given by the Stokes-Einstein equation, and this is indicated by this equation here, where k sub b is the Boltzmann constant, uh, eta sub zero is the viscosity of the liquid medium, and a is the radius of the diffusing species, that is whether it's a molecule or a particle. And of course, t is the characteristic time for deformation, much like the Debra number. So when you're using the Stokes-Einstein equation, we can estimate the time taken for the diffusing species to move a characteristic distance. And the radius of the diffusing species is chosen as this distance, uh, given to the equation shown below here. The characteristic time in regard to the Piquet number is the, for shear flow is the reciprocal of the shear rate. And this is taken for a cubic element to be transformed into a parallelogram with angles of 45 degrees. And when you do that, the Piquet number can then be written as such, shown here. Remembering that this is what the Debra number looks like. So this term is similar to tau for the characteristic time. Now, in solutions where the diffusing component is much larger than the solute molecules, like a polymeric solution, we have to modify this equation. In dilute solution, the above equation would suffice, but not when it becomes concentrated. So the interactions between the diffusing species slow the motion and then increase the viscosity. So, uh, in this case, we use shear stress instead to give a useful approximation of change in diffusivity of the components of the material. And you'll notice that this is the relationship between shear stress and shear rate in a Newtonian liquid. And this results in the equation below, which we used further when we refer to the Piquet number, the one in the red box shown here. Reduced stress uh, is another term that is similar to the Piquet number and the Debra number. This was introduced by Krieger uh, and is very similar to the Piquet number in the terms that it uses. 
um, it's also similar in relationship to the Dever number. So in case here, these terms, these terms are similar to tau, and here, these terms are similar to tau in the Dever number. There are similarities between the Dever number, the Piquet number, and the reduced stress. The mechanism of stress relaxation detailed by reduced stress is due to the diffusion of microstructural components, much like the Piquet number. For a slow deformation process, the rate at which structural elements rearranges is high, and this has very little perturbation from the dormant state or the quiescent state. In this case, viscous deformation occurs, and this is a case in which you have low Deber numbers, Piquet numbers, or reduced stress. For a rapid deformation process, relaxation cannot take place and that energy is stored. If deformation is continuous, yielding or breaking of the structure may, may occur. So that gives you high Deber number, Piquet number, or reduced stress. And that concludes our introduction to rheological concepts. Thank you.